okay i guess we khushit is gone for now uh so i'll take over from here so the thing is uh, we want to use ceramic to move most of the data which we are storing on contracts to use ceramic as a lay, as a caching layer wherein we can fetch the data easily from ceramic ceramic and idx rather than storing the entire data whatever we want say let's say we want to share a particular document with a user we want to store most of the information on ceramic rather than storing it on contracts so because we know that fetching the data from uh, any uh, contract is going to take a lot of time so we just want to move most of these things into ceramic uh, so that it becomes easy for us at the end of the day uh so this is the roadmap we have and there were some issues we faced along the way wherein we we know that we can share a particular document with other but it does not become an where two parties can't sit together and make a mutable data into the same contract it only the person who is the owner of that particular document can ceramic document can keep pushing data into it so end of the day we want to we so we want to see how we can use ceramic wherein two people can have access to the same document where they can have write and write a, write and read access to the same document so that it becomes easy for people to share a, a wide variety of data between two people uh, so this was something which we even we spoke on discord and they told it was going to get implemented soon but my question would be how would the other person know that he is being part of certain document that he has ownership of particular document because let's say i add a person as an owner of the particular document how does the other person also know that he is a part of it because he uh, he needs some way to know that he is a part of it right so these are the kind of questions which we also faced and we want to try to come over that and implement a lot of them again in coming back to science chain so we want to integrate a lot of things of ceramic and idx onto science chain to solve most of these simple issues that we have yeah um and welcome back kushik hey yeah, hi uh, my zoom just crashed and i restarted for some reason so i think i can continue if you have time uh, time towards the end maybe the demo so i couldn't finish the <clears throat> proper flow uh, but i think i would like to talk more about uh, you know what exactly what we build on ideas and then the ceramic uh, if that's uh, you know uh yeah so i think yatish is the one who was trying to uh, you know understand idx uh, so basically uh, you know go through all the documentation and how is it related to ceramic i think ceramic is something still uh, uh, new to us we are still trying to figure out each and every uh, libraries what what is there uh, for example we just uh, found out about the uh, jsd id uh, today and then we wanted to look into the jsd id concept on how, how it can uh, help us do the you know uh, um protected data we wanted to share on the document details and all those things uh, yeah so even we couldn't during the hackathon we couldn't integrate the three id connect so we, we we were kind of using the identity wallet uh, just on on that layer uh, so we we want to make the flow properly uh, first go through the ceramic concepts again and which is the best way of you know starting the onboarding flow or anything uh, so that's something that we have some in thing in the roadmap uh reiterate on the ceramic concept and how properly uh, we can do it so pro probably we can get involved with the community more in the discord and uh, get to know each and every concept how we can uh, take that uh, so the main three things that we have in our uh, uh, agenda i mean uh, sign chain is that the confidentiality and the verifiable proofs and the uh, the verifiable credentials uh, so we feel that the ceramic is something that can help us do everything in, uh, uh, bind everything together Uh, so our final end goal is something that only the smart contract concept that we want to use uh, is something for an incentivization or maybe some kind of anchoring that we want to do on top of that. So eventually we want to move away from the concepts of most of the on-chain uh, data storage. So uh, especially what happens is that when we we have a plan to build a similar thing, I mean the sign chain in enterprise blockchain as well. so all those scalability is pretty much uh, great there. Uh, some uh, we find that some of the clients that doesn't have a a uh, great interaction so uh, the querying and then the basically writing operation takes the same time in uh, most of the uh, uh, enterprise blockchain because they we deal with the orion nodes which is a uh, you know privacy node and also the when we deal with the privacy node it becomes very slow uh, so that's the reason we want to move lot of concept from on chain uh, to something like a decentralized storage uh, or uh, you know we know that ceramic supports even storing something uh, uh, the database as data storage backups right Uh, so that's something that we want to explore in enterprise blockchain uh, but uh, we wanted to keep purely the protocol uh, uh, the building the protocol in public blockchain limited to decentralized storage but we wanted to explore something else as well in an enterprise 
uh, blockchain, but using all the Ceramic uh, uh, protocol. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a long journey for us uh, going to be in Ceramic. So we are still at the beginning. We feel that. Uh, so although we were able to integrate few things and understand few things, but we still need to uh, rebuild our architecture and uh, we have a long goal for Sangchen actually. Yeah, I mean, first, I think when we saw the demo uh, in the ETH online videos, we were like totally impressed with the amount of work you guys did in a short period of time. And, um, and yeah, I mean, I have a bunch of ideas and, you know, things that I could think of where, you know, we might be able to help, like you said, with um, Threaty Connect, which wraps Identity Wallet, which wraps uh, DIDs, and so, and JS did. And so in there, you might be able to use that for sort of your protected data, your encrypted data, um, like you mentioned. Um, and I think um, Yatish was uh, mentioning that there might be um, some trouble or, you know, one of the challenges might be um, you know, if you have two users that can own a, the same document and update the same document, so like multi writers, I think that's something that you know we're working towards as well. Yeah. Um, and and also like the notification part, I think that's a, a Web three challenge in general. Um, you know, there's obviously like a simple solution where you could do like since you've already had users sign in with an email. Um, you theoretically could send them like an email just saying like, hey, you have new activity on your account or something, but that's, you know, not as decentralized as some of the mm -hmm. other things that, mm -hmm. you know, are being developed in the Web3 notification space. But, um, but yeah, that's definitely like something we've heard too. Um, even as we were building three box, like how do I know if someone's mentioned me or how do I know if I got a new post up my wall or something? Yeah, um, so th that's one of the reasons uh, we went with the smart contract layer for uh, all the uh, proofs of the signature we had to store in smart contract for now, uh, or we had to come up with something. Uh, but we actually, we had, a, uh, I guess, one or two phases of ceramic implementation. We could only do the uh, one implementation. So we wanted to move the document uh, anchoring, signature anchoring, everything to ceramic. Uh, yeah, that's where we hit a uh, small hurdle. Yeah, so we want to figure out figure that out, uh, not just for, as I told, uh, uh, for the public blockchain, but we want to look into how it can help us in enterprise blockchain, uh, because it can make us uh, our caching layer much more faster. Uh, so all the things we don't want to put a lot of things in on chain. Uh, we want a caching layer, which uh, we don't want to again use databases. So uh, tamper proof uh, and uh, caching layer is something that we are looking for. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Um... And I could even imagine too that in the first step where you're uploading, um, like I don't know how it's implemented now, but you could theoretically like upload the the file into or the document into a ceramic document and then mm -hmm. choose to back up that document to one of the locations you mentioned, um, like Fleek or you know Filecoin with Textiles Powergate or something, um, and so you can kind of eliminate that step um, as well. So you have like the document in the same like object that's being signed by parties. Um, but again, I think those are all optimizations, but um, yeah, it was really impressive what you guys put together. Thank you, thank you. Credit to my team as well. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, and um, Aditya, I think you said you're from Althea? Yep, um, and my team is also here, I think, Anshu, so yeah. Yeah, hello. Uh, do you guys want to share what you built? Yep, sure. Um, can I share my screen? Yep. Okay. Give me one second. If you can tell me if my screen is visible. Okay, perfect. Um, so I I tried creating a, a really in a detailed presentation, but unfortunately, I think there's some error. Lost most of it. So it has like a very brief uh, walkthrough. I'll mostly be talking over it. Um, so yeah, this is about our project Alethea, and um, I'll just quickly go over it. So introduction, um, I'm Mati Vijay Kumar, and that's uh, my teammate Anshul is also here. And uh, we are from Bangalore, India. We are currently pursuing um, our second year in computer science uh, engineering. And uh, moving on. So what is Alethea about? Um, I'll be very honest, uh, this is more of a, a, a hackathon build project that we had challenged ourselves with. So we started off with a, a very different idea for ETH Online, but we were not happy with it because 
we were too comfortable. Um, it was something that we already knew. We were trying to build some kind of a certification system. Uh, it was something that we already knew pretty well how we could do it. So we're not happy with it. We instantly pivoted our ideas around uh, halfway through the hackathon and decided to go with something along the lines of decentralized identity because we didn't know anything about it. Um, so it was like, we have to learn it. We have to read up all about it and build something and put together that we you know, could submit as a hackathon project. So that was the entire challenge for us. Um, we just delved into the, uh, we saw Ceramic as one of the sponsors. We went through all the documentation. We were super excited. And uh, so talking about Aletheia itself, it's a profile management that we've built on top of IDX as well as Ceramic Network. Um, we've used pretty much uh, the, the, the standard packages available for any web client uh, provided by uh, Ceramic Network itself. Uh, essentially what a user can do is um, log in using his um, a MetaMask account. Um, and then you have to just approve his um, profile details to 3ID Connect, and he'll be able to view his profile, make changes to it. At the same time, if he has the DID of uh, one of his friends, he can also further paste uh, that DID and get the details of his uh, friend in the explore section. So um, that's kind of what it is about. And uh, why we build Aditya? Now, I think we were really fascinated by the idea of um, decentralized uh, you know, identities to allow the user to take over the complete control of their data. Um, I think it's moving forward, it's going to be very important. Um, you, I think we've already, uh, with Web3 and everything else happening, uh, we need to kind of eliminate more of those backend database layers. And one of the main things would be storing profiles. I think almost every DAP out there requires profile uh, management and you know profile data to be stored. So it was in, it is important to have something on in decentralized, a decentralized space for that. So that was that idea behind it. And we realized that we could really uh, do something interesting with it. And we had the perfect tools with IDX and Ceramics. So we thought, uh, let's let's go ahead and build it out. And um, moving on. So I'll just quickly go actually go over the future plans and then I'll go to the demo and uh, actually walk through all of that. Or maybe I think I should just skip to the demo itself. That would make more sense. Um, so this is kind of the landing page at first and uh, we can click on try the demo and it takes us to this um, start screen of sorts. We can get started or we can choose MetaMask here and um, we get the 3ID connect uh, iframe on top, clicking on continue. Um, we'll have to confirm to MetaMask, I believe. It usually takes a couple of seconds, unfortunately. Um, And so what's it, what's it doing in the background here? Uh, so it's basically uh, taking the uh, DID that's being fetched and then, you know, setting the, um, uh, using IDX web to uh, retrieve the, uh, the data and all the, the profile schema is being set, all of that's happening. Um, only after you get the, uh, the DID, uh, pro, as in the signature from the DID connect. So that happens and in the background, all that is fetched and we get the profile over here um, in a couple of seconds. So this is the basic uh, details. Uh, to be honest, it's not complete. Um, we, we had a lot more plans, bigger plans, uh, uh, but we get the basic profile over here. You can click on edit and change the fields. Um, and you can update it uh, if you please can make some changes to it. Um, choose a profile image or whatever. It might be probably just do the same one. Um, maybe I can choose something else, demonstrate. I'll just change some fields over here. Click on update. Once again, it takes a couple of seconds and updates the details. Uh, it's very simple and uh, basic right now, but we plan on adding a lot more layers. Uh, in fact, we had a couple of other teams at uh, Ethan and itself contacting us that um, they were interested in collaborating and seeing how it could work with their projects, which made us uh, which is something super excited. And we are working towards, I think it's ETHXP, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so ETHXP one of the projects out there, um, they were interested and we're kind of figuring out how this can become a lot more modular, wherein um, even the, the application itself can store some of their data that they like to please as in, um, so now Ether X, uh, XP has a lot of the uh, profile points that you can collect, XP points. So how that can be displayed in a, a basic profile, like in some parts in some ways, we're exploring that. Um, and finally, we have one last section in the, in the DAP. That's explore. Um, essentially, if you have a DID, you can paste it, click on resolve, and um, you get like a view only instance of the basic profile. Um, this should be faster, hopefully. 
once again, it's just uh, taking the um, the DID and setting it into the IDX web client to fetch whatever details it is. Cool. Yeah. Once once we're done with the demo and your presentation, I have a lot of ideas uh, for the, yeah. the XP integration. Yeah. So we get the um, a very simple instance of which which is um, read only and not uh, editable. Um, Talking about some of the future plans, we actually have lots. Um, this has opened a whole new possibility that we did not know existed. And um, uh, we were kind of skeptical when we approached it. We we're not sure if we can build something uh, really useful, but a lot of projects have contacted us. Some of our mentors have really appreciated the idea. So we are looking to build a lot. Um, I think there was a small discussion about our uh, user notifications. That was actually one of our ideas. So we plan on creating something that um, they could submit. If we, we plan to create some kind of an API if possible, um, and uh, through which they can uh, retrieve the profiles at the same time. If they want to send a notification, uh, we could actually store a separate profile with some certain personal details, including um, like the mobile number or maybe even the email ID. And um, if they want to send a notification, um, if we can, we can actually check if that particular application is approved to send notifications by the user. If they are, they can actually get a notification within Elithia web client or to their email itself. Uh, that's kind of one of our ideas we had thought of. It's not complete as such, which is why we couldn't um, implement it during the hackathon, but we are very excited about that. One of the other plans, if I may speak about, was regarding health records. So we were exploring how there can be three uh, different clients involved over here, one being the patient, uh, and all the patient records being updated, the medical records being uploaded, and at the same time, probably allowing uh, the doctor to make certain changes. The best part is, I think, with ceramic documents, you can go back and revisit the history and the, uh, the different versions of it. So that really helps. At the same time, let's say go to the, uh, the pharmacist to kind of uh, get some medicines. He could actually verify to make sure that this, is a, uh, this particular document with the medicines has been signed by a, a doctor and not something that's being faked. So I think there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, I'm very, very excited to kind of build something. Um, I'm not sure if I'm actually kind of putting forward my excitement for, in, for this uh, community call really well, but we're really excited and we want to build something a lot more. Um, the next couple of months, we are setting a lot more time towards this. Um, it's it's kind of been tough during the, ha the hackathon because we had a lot of university exams, but we are kind of more free now and we plan on devoting a lot more time. Um, and yeah, it goes without saying, um, we have developed this, we approached this project with a very open mind, uh, not having too many uh, restrictions and objectives to kind of bind us together. Um, we obviously had a sense of direction, just that we went with the flow. And keeping that in mind, we are very open to any ideas and suggestions, taking some, you know, making some changes and um, all of that. In fact, I think uh, we had joined one of the office hours call, and I spoke to Zach, if I'm not wrong. Um, and we were exploring initially creating how we could create a ceramic explorer, where you can just simply look up documents. Um, we're not 100% sure how to approach it since uh, we are new to the entire ecosystem. So we thought we'll familiarize, our, we'll familiarize ourselves with certain uh, initial ideas, and then go ahead and kind of uh, build something bigger. Um, that's kind of about it. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen, and uh, maybe we can have uh, some kind of a chat around what the, the possibilities are and what we can possibly do. I think Anshul, uh, if he's here, we can both have a discussion right now. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Anshul. Uh, hello. Um, so it so congrats. Uh, it seems like um, well one on learning a new field of Web three and two like Definitely. from getting all the positive feedback from all the other projects. What have been some of the the things that people have reached out uh, regarding? Um, so I think I mentioned the Ether XP project, right? Um, if I'm not wrong, it's a mix of a game atmosphere as well as where you can learn through the game uh, how the Web three ecosystem works. That's kind of what the Ether is. And they have these XP points, which you get uh, like badges when you complete certain uh, levels of, of sorts. So they were interested in creating profiles, how they can manage the entire profile on Elithia, plus these uh, you know points where reward uh, system it can be displayed on on the on their profiles. That's super yeah, actually, cool. I think, yeah, you can talk about. Uh, I think Anshul received uh, one of the uh, personnel had contacted through email. Uh, Anshul, maybe you can talk about that. Uh, yeah, I received uh, a mail from uh, someone who was uh, viewing projects, uh, a London-based, uh, by the name of Anthony Beaumont. Uh, 
he was interested in the project uh, uh, he has fixed a call with us uh, for second number he's go- um, i mean uh, uh, he's going to talk about how we can implement this over uh, community based lines uh, something like that we are not uh, exactly sure about what he's going to talk about but yeah that's uh, if you're not wrong i think uh, he runs some kind of a um, coding community in the web3 space yeah uh, that's yeah, exactly. what we got from his linkedin profile and we're kind of looking forward to that as well as to how our project can play a role there but yeah it's it's a lot lot more possibilities that we were initially not aware of and uh, we are super excited and we are super happy that we uh, chose to build uh, this project for hackathon super cool and quick question about uh, the ether xp are those xp points issued uh, on chain or, or are they off chain right now um i believe they might be uh, nft tokens so we haven't had a, a in depth discussion we just spoken a bit over discord uh, we have we had planned to schedule a call sometime next week so at that time we'll kind of discuss what they are anticipating and uh, what uh, we can how we can kind of uh, meet on like a middle ground where both the possibilities are met from what we can uh, you know possibly uh, expect from them and at the same time what they are looking to get from elite as well Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, um, so we've also been, you know, a, as we were building out IDX, we've had a bunch of people make, but Hole is another similar type of a, a platform where it's like a game, but also you learn and experience Web3, and by doing so, you earn like points or reputation okay. of some kind. Um, and, and and there's like almost two ways that we've been thinking about it. And, I, you know, as you guys talk to that team, I'd you know, love to hear what they had to say, but um, basically like if you could even just create a mapping in IDX to say like, you know, you create a definition that's like ether XP points and then it yeah. creates a reference document. And in that reference document, it like points to the ether XP token contract or something where, so you can like resolve mm-hmm. that this person has Absolutely. ether XP through IDX. And so, um, you know, you still look at IDX to discover that they have it. And then you go to the contract to look up their score if it's on chain. Um, and if it's off chain, you know, they could even issue those directly to each user as ceramic documents that as they complete more tasks, the, the ether just updates their document with their new score. So sort of like a, a mutable score that updates dynamically as they continue to do things. Um, and then as far as like profile visualization, you know, that's like up to you, um, you know, like you could show them in the profile um, and, and various things like that. Um, so yeah, I think that all that's cool, and it's great to hear that people have been excited about it. Yeah, definitely. I think we had some questions regarding how uh, multiple accounts can uh, work on the same ceramic document, but I think we can discuss it over Discord. Um, there's, it's not something that uh, we like take up the community call if it's something else that is on the agenda. Yeah, okay. for medical records, we were thinking about that. Like a multi-owner document or a yeah. document that can be. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah, that's good feedback. So that's from two projects now in a row. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, I mean, so there, I think there's one, maybe two more ETH online projects there that are going to present, but if you have time after they, uh, after they share, then I think we're happy to dig into whatever you need for any team. Awesome. Well, thanks for the cool work again, like both of these products look amazing and don't feel like hackathon projects. So, um, Solid work there. I always appreciate that. Uh, and then I think, uh, so who's up next? Supply chain hub? Yeah, sure. Supply? Cool, Rishi. Yeah. Uh, so hi, uh, let me just present my screen. Uh, okay, so hi all. Uh, me and my team have built a product called Supply Chain Hub which is a platform where anyone, even with no knowledge about Ethereum or coding or even blockchain, can come and create a customized decentralized supply chain to track the end-to-end product journey, which can include chat support and payment support, for example. And uh, so it's basically a platform. It's a very uh, simple UI or very simple steps where anyone can come and create their own supply chain. Uh, so here's the demo video. Uh, we had actually submitted this for uh, ETH online also. So I'll be explaining it uh, with the video as uh, the process if we show it and take a little more time. Uh, so let me just play it. 
Uh, just tell me uh, if you can hear the. Okay, uh, you will hear my voice. So this, you connect your wallet. Uh, you click on create. Uh, we'll see the op other options later. So here you are while creating, you give your name, uh, your organization's name and your uh, address. You now create the product. So what is the name of the product for which you want to build the supply chain for? Uh, what type of product it is? What properties would you like to take from the manufacturer who is creating the product while the creation uh, to note in the supply chain? So these things are editable. For example, you can delete it or you can add more and it's completely customized. You can track by lot ID, you can track by product ID, uh, or you can track using both. So this is basically for uh, different pricing criteria. Here you create the actual supply chain where you create the different roles. Here we have created a sample supply chain with uh, four roles. So manufacturer, dealer, distributor, and retailer. Each function C are visible. You can edit the names if you want. And then, uh, Contract is automatically generated using a Python script. Uh, everything happens on, uh, nothing is created manually. Everything is automatic and it's deployed. Currently we are deploying it on the Matic network. You get your transaction hash, the contract address and the person who is deploying is the owner. This is the none yet created a chat app using Srame. Uh, this is for people in the supply chain or the roles or the different members of the supply chain to chat with each other. So we have all, uh, it's a real time decentralized chat application using Ceramic to connect all the members in the same supply chain. It uses sockets to enable real time messaging between the members and Ceramic tiles are used to process those messages. Every time a new message is sent, a new Ceramic tile is created which stores the message and its author's identity. So that the next time when the user chats again, the same member, he will get to see all his previous messages. So this is the Android app. Uh, you can add to the supply chain or join the supply chain from here. You cannot create a supply chain in the app. So the manufacturer can add the next person, for example, the dealer and so on. So he had just added a dealer. The Right now the owner added the manufacturer, sorry. Then the manufacturer logs into his account. He sets up his profile, for example, his name, latitude and longitude for the office. Then uh, the lot ID, the product ID, the product ID has to be scanned or written. Lot ID over here is batch one. So then there are many function. The product has been added to supply chain, but uh, due to lack of time, we'll directly move on how the product is tracked. So anybody, not just a customer or any person in the supply chain can track the previous journey of the product. And this is how the journey of the product will be seen. So who was the owner with his public address? And you can also track the uh, location or the office of that person or the office of that role in the supply chain. For example, the dealer, the distributor, any name you wish to give. So the product has currently been deployed on Matic. Yeah, thank you. So if you have any questions, I guess uh, my friend Shubham or my colleague is here. He will answer those. Yeah, this is again, very cool. Um, so, well, first of all, congrats on like a complete product. Again, uh, these all look awesome. I um, continue to be blown away. Uh, so can you tell me a bit about how you built the, the chat section using Ceramic? We've had a bunch of people say like, can I use Ceramic to do chat? And so interested to hear about the implementation and how that went and any challenges you had there. Mm, yeah, sure. I guess Shobham will answer that question. Uh, Shobham is here. Now, yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the chat app is basically built uh, using sockets and ceramic. Uh, so like sockets enable real time uh, messaging between the members. And uh, like 
we are not storing those messages on a like a centralized database or something instead we are storing all the messages on ceramic so every time a new message is created uh, the content of the using the content of the message a new ceramic tile is created uh, so like it is persisted so like the next time when you chat with the same same member you get to see all uh, his previous chats or not okay very cool so each each message is its own tile document yeah and how do you keep track of those tile documents that correspond with that specific message? Do you encode some metadata about that like specific message ID or, or like chat ID? So primarily what we are doing is like uh, we are storing all the message IDs in the browser cache uh, for every member that chats. And uh, for like uh, security reasons, we are also backing up to it to a cloud database. Cool. So, yeah. So you're using sockets to just pass the ceramic doc IDs around and storing them when you receive it in local cache and then backing that up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like just the ceramic IDs are passed through sockets and on the front end, uh, we use the ceramic SDK to load the, like the content and the author of the message. Okay. Very nice. Um, and how was the, what's the real time performance of that? Like, um, you know, like obviously this is a recorded demo and stuff, but how is the, the speed of those messages and what is that actually? Yeah, I think uh, like whenever a message is sent, it has to like uh, go to ceramic first. So yeah, there's like a 0.5 second delay, uh, but yeah, like it's not that pretty much. Okay, that's not bad. Um, did you consider using ceramic um, anywhere else in the in the rest of the product, or it just met your need for the chat section? Yeah, actually, uh, we had planned to like use ceramic uh, for storing the additional data of the supply chain, uh, but uh, like, I'm not sure uh, if uh, ceramic supports uh, an Android app, and we are like primarily based on an Android app. The user can you know sort of uh, integrate its own supply chain through the app. Uh, so we are not sure sure of like uh, if we would be able to pull that off. So like we did not go did not use ceramic that way. Cool. And um, Rishi, were you trying to say something? Uh, no, I guess Shubham answered the question. Great. Um, okay. Yeah. So Android support. Um, Paul, anything to add on that? Um, yeah, well, so unfortunately, all our stack in, is in JavaScript, so we are not providing uh, Java libraries ourselves. Uh, but if you're up for developing some or, you know, others who are, uh, don't hesitate to, to join our Discord to, so, so we can help you with the implementation with any, any question you have uh, trying to port Ceramic or IDX to, to other languages. That would be great. And Paul, yeah, what are sure. the main what are the main libraries you think that would need to be ported? I guess it's just like the crypto stuff, right? Is the hardest part. Yeah, yeah, it's mostly crypto. Um, so it's everything that's going on in identity wallet uh, with uh, key management, uh, being able to sign uh, messages. So which is needed in order to um, to to create document on ceramic. Uh, there is also some encryption primitives um, that are started to be implemented in Identity Wallet. But if you don't need encryption with Ceramic, you can get away with just having the signing parts. Uh, otherwise, you would be limited to only having a read-only client um, using HTTP over, over a Ceramic node. Yeah, so, so re reading in an Android context is simple, but actually writing or like authenticating anything, signing anything is the hard part. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And as Paul said, please reach out uh, if, if you want to pursue that or you know anyone that does. Yeah. Yeah, sure. sure. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Uh, are there any other teams on? I think it was just you three. Um, for now, but just to check, are there any other ETH online teams? Okay, cool. Um, so 
Well, one, thanks for the presentations again. Uh, I love actually seeing some of this stuff come together. Like we've been, obviously ceramic is still in a test net and IDX is in alpha. Um, so you guys really are like some of the, the guinea pigs on this stuff. Um, so if you, you know, think of any feedback you have for us, like especially before we, we go to mainnet, I think that's gonna be really helpful um, just to make sure that, you know, at the core protocol level, things are right and aren't really gonna change too much where IDX, we can always continue iterating because, you know, it's, it's just a library built on top. But um, yeah, thanks for all the effort and work. It's great to see it come to life. Yeah, one place where uh, I can ask something. Yeah, of course. Yeah, one thing uh, in the chat app right now, as uh, Shubham said, that we are storing them in the uh, cache and cache and also backing it up to a cloud database. So we are planning of using, uh, if possible, using text type, but due to lack of time, that wasn't possible. Uh, so if you could provide some guidance over there on how to use it, how to use textile. Textile is also one of the products of ceramic, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, so, so text, textile isn't, but they are one of our good friends uh, and one a team that we work with probably most closely. Um, we have a lot of ideas. We're actually working with textile on getting more native IDX and identity wallet integration, like JS did integration into textile um, because we're gonna be supporting our CTO and their CTO have been working on what JS did uses is actually this uh, DAG Jose uh, format for signing and encrypting data. And we worked on that with textile. And so they're gonna be using the JS DIDS library in textile too. So that way we have the same um, way of signing and encrypting data, both in IPFS. So it will be like a lot more compatible. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of ideas for how you could use textile for something like that, whether it's just for um, backing up the, the messages um, or like using a textile DB for the messages. And you could just create a mapping between a user's identity index, like IDX. And that was the exactly DB. what we were planning to do uh, using the database, textile database. So even yeah. that is a real time database. Uh, so we are planning to, we are trying to use that actually, but uh, due to lack of time, we decided to keep it right now on localhost using cache. Yep. Um, so definitely open to helping and providing some guidance there if you want. Um, you know, we're always available in Discord and can hop on another chat um, to help walk through some of that stuff. Um, I think textile may be coming out. I don't know where exactly it is in the roadmap. I know they've started working on it, but um, a more simple library to make chatting easier with IDX and textile. Um, so that might solve your needs. Um, I just don't know when it's going to be released. Okay. Yeah. So I think, uh, something that we were, uh, looking to towards was, you know, the fleek has space demand, uh, textile has its mailbox. Uh, so how it's gonna integrate with ceramic, uh, uh so obviously we are, more interested in something which is protected data, right? So we look for all the options, how that binds together. Uh, so something that we built was we built our own uh, encryption model on top of that, uh, just to avoid this running hubs and nodes in our machine. Uh, so we like to you know, look into that as well, how you know Ceramic uh, provides this protected data sharing uh, between uh, two parties or identities. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, if you're open to it, um, would also be up for a quick call to just hear about exactly what you'd, you'd want there. And um, obviously that I think there are many different avenues that we could go here, but yeah, especially with like the identity wallet and JS dids provides like a good foundation for some of that stuff. And then it's just like, you know, where do you actually manage and, and ultimately store that content? Um, you know, is it in ceramic documents? Is it um, in other technologies, but using the, the signatures and encryption provided by um, did JS dids and identity index to create those mappings. Um, so yeah, there's many ways it can be implemented. It's just sort of what's best for um, your use case. Yep. All right, so five minutes left. Um, thanks for yeah the presentations again. If any more questions, we can hang out, chat for five more minutes. If not, I think there's an ETH online final uh, presentation or something going on. So I'm sure we can let you guys run and hop to that. 
All right. Well, thanks for dropping in and hopefully we'll see you guys at the next one. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Bye.